Hey guys, what's up? I'm so excited for today's video because this is my first coding video. So for the people that didn't know, I'm currently learning my fifth language. It's a little bit different from the other ones because it's a coding language. I'm learning JavaScript. So in today's video, I'm kind of gonna share with you guys how I've been learning how to code and I'm going to bring you along with a week of learning how to code with me. Okay, so now for a brief summary of my coding journey so far and the resources that I've tried and that just haven't worked out for me. So I decided to learn how to code in January. And I decided to learn JavaScript because I feel like that's kind of where I want to focus on more in the future, front end and web development. So in January, I decided to learn how to code. And of course, I started out with Code Academy because that is the one that we mostly start off with because that's the one that everybody really knows. So I started out with Code Academy and I was very happy with my course because it was very beginner friendly and it would really just grab your hand and walk you through all of the steps. Now about halfway through my course, I started kind of watching more videos on experts and actual software engineers and I started kind of watching TikToks on that and that's when I started my TikTok. So for the people that don't know, I do have a TikTok, Gala Codes, where I share my coding journey. So these TikTokers that I was watching recommended a lot of different resources that were in Code Academy, like Free Code Camp, The Odin Project, and Leak Codes. Now, I started out with Free Code Camp and I really liked it. I preferred it over Code Academy. So although I was really working hard on this and I was focusing on the JavaScript course, I felt like I miss was missing something and I couldn't really understand the way of thinking and I was kind of struggling a little bit. And that is when I saw a video on my TikTok for you page that you should start out with a computer science course instead of jumping straight into a language. And this person on TikTok was sharing how it's better to start off with a CS course because you're able to understand the way of thinking and the problem solving. And you're also able to try every single language, like a little bit of each, so you can better choose the language that is for you. And that is what I did. So I went on EDX and I found the course that everybody knows, CS50, and that is where I'm at right now. So CS50 is a course by Harvard, which is an introduction course to computer science, which means that it covers all the foundation and everything that you should know for a complete beginner before you start focusing on a specific language. You can get it completely for free on EDX and you can work in it on your own pace, which is perfect. They recommend about 12 weeks and working six to 18 hours a week. And that is where I am right now. I am in lecture zero and I am working on the problem set. So come join me. Well, now it's time to start the first lecture of a CS50 course by Harvard on edx.org. So what is really great is that we have a lot of resources. So you have access to the lecture, the PowerPoint that the professor uses, notes, as well as the transcript. That way you can kind of follow along and you could also maybe take notes later and just focus on the lecture first. And then you can use the notes to take your own notes. So when you go to the CS50 website, you go to week zero lecture and now we start so um the lecture is i believe an hour yes it's an hour and 45 minutes long so my goal is to kind of just get 50 minutes in and then tomorrow i'll do the other 50. Okay, so this is about a week later and I just completed the first lecture and I wanted to talk to you guys about my overall thoughts on the course so far and kind of what I am thinking and how I feel about it. So um, like I said, I finished the first lecture and I really do like it so far. I feel like the professor does a very, very good job in explaining, um, you know, this kind of very complex subject in a very casual and simple way. Now I do expect him and the course to get more and more advanced because we should be becoming ourselves more advanced and learning as we go. But I do really like how um, he kind of like grabs your hand and walks you along through every single step. And he also uses examples and kind of everyday life to understand the idea and the kind of problem solving, you know, way of thinking behind code. I also like how he talks about his personal experience because he also took the CS50 course way back when. So I do like how he kind of is able to relate to the students and to the course overall. So what I did was I completed the lecture, but then I also went through the notes, like I explained before, they do include the notes and the slides. So I went through the notes and kind of took notes myself of anything that I felt that was important. Now, since it is the first lecture in a very beginner friendly course, there really isn't much to learn so far, but if you would like to see, you know, in a very specific way, what I have learned so far in the first lecture, you could watch my video on TikTok and Gala Codes. 
Well, now it's time to work on the problem set for this lecture. So when you go on CS50, it says that you have to kind of create a project using Scratch. It could be a game or it could be a story. It could be whatever you want, but it has to meet these requirements. The requirements are... But it must use at least two sprites and one of them must not be the cat. Your project must at least have three scripts. It must have at least one conditional. It must use at least one custom block. And they should be more complex than the ones shown in the uh, lecture, but not like the one that is the hardest hardware game. So now I'm going to start thinking of some ideas of what it could be. And I'm also going to log into Scratch because I've never had a Scratch account before. Okay, so I created an account on Scratch and like I have the blank template here, but I can't really think of anything. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the different sprites and maybe if I go through this list, something will come to mind. Okay, so um, I went through all of the different sprites and what I'm kind of thinking is that I'm kind of going to create a game where you have to catch something, but something is trying to catch you. So it's kind of um, make it a little bit more complicated. Now, when I'm going through all the different sprites, um, three different things kind of jump out to me. So one of them is this frog right here where it's kind of like its tongue is going to grab something. So I'm thinking that maybe the user is the frog and they have to eat the dragonfly. It's like right here. So like each time they eat a dragonfly, it's like a point. But if they get eaten by the bird, uh, maybe like that's when they lose. So I'm gonna figure that out. I've never used Scratch before, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so I really didn't do a really good job of bringing you guys along. I'm sorry, I have to get better at filming while I'm figuring it out, but I believe it's done. So it's about two hours later and I think my project is done. So I wanna to talk to you guys about the things that were kind of hard for me. So number one, it was hard for me to figure out how to get the bird and the dragonfly to move around in random directions. Um, but I didn't want them to kind of hit the wall and kind of stay there. I wanted them to be able to hit the wall and bounce back. But whenever I would do that like uh, turn, it would also kind of turn the figure, but I wanted them to kind of stay, you know, straight. I didn't want them to be upside down and stuff like that. So that was kind of hard for me to figure out. Um, so what I did was I kind of went through YouTube and I figured it out. And I also kind of just clicked buttons. Another thing that I didn't really understand was how to get the uh, custom block. So I just clicked buttons and I got it. And um, yeah, so I think it's done. I will screen record my screen and kind of show you guys the end results. But I have everything. I have the music, I have the custom block. The custom block is my music. So I'll show, you know, screen record and show you guys kind of my code behind it. But yeah, leave um, any advice or anything you guys would change down below. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to submit and I think we're done for the first lecture and the first problem set of this course. Well guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. So let me know in the comments what type of coding content you like for me to start posting. If there's anything specific that you have in mind, my coding journey, the CS50 course, anything, let me know. And don't forget that I do have a TikTok, Gala Codes, which I definitely recommend you guys to check out. That way you guys will get coding videos every single day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.